Hello and welcome to News Now. I'm Keith Liu. Our top stories tonight. No end to the new coronavirus outbreak in sight. More than 100,000 people infected around the world and counting. In China's Fujian province, a hotel turned COVID-19 quarantine facility collapses. Dozens are trapped. And China counts the cost of the outbreak. Exports slump for the first two months of the year. The COVID-19 virus has infected more than 100,000 people worldwide. South Korea has reported another 274 infections, bringing its total to more than 7,000. 49 people have died in the country. South Korea saw another jump in coronavirus cases after a new cluster emerged at an apartment complex in Daegu. A third of the residents there have contracted the virus, prompting a complete lockdown. The two buildings house some members of the Shincheonji Church, the religious group linked to a majority of South Korea's cases. To control the spread of the virus, officials stepped up disinfection and cleaning in Daegu, the worst affected city. The Philippines is taking a big step in the fight against the virus. President Rodrigo Duterte is expected to declare a national public health emergency over the coronavirus outbreak. This comes after the country's first local transmission was confirmed. There are six official cases in the Philippines. In Vietnam, new infections were reported Saturday after the country went without new cases for three weeks. There are now some 20 cases, and the government is urging residents to remain calm after many rushed to the supermarkets to stock up. Indonesia now has four cases after two more people tested positive for the coronavirus. Authorities in Bali aren't taking any chances and have been disinfecting hotels, tourist hotspots and restaurants. The island has seen a significant drop in visitors, but some holiday goers haven't let the outbreak derail their plans. Oh, we're a little worried, but um, we don't want that to stop us from living our lives. Um, we just make sure that we're keeping clean, washing our hands, sanitizing our hands, keeping our hands away from our mouths, and doing the best that we can, but we still want to live our lives. Malaysia also reported another 10 new cases, bringing its total to 93. Well, China has reported a decline in new infections nationwide. Most of the new cases come from the virus epicenter of Hubei province, though the increase there has been slowing. A handful of new cases are reported outside Hubei. Most of them are imported cases. The country confirmed 99 new infections on Friday, down from 143 cases a day earlier. This takes the total number of confirmed cases to over 80,800. The death toll has also risen to 3,073 after 28 new fatalities were reported in Hubei. Meanwhile, Chinese authorities are moving to return life to normal in the country. Officials expect all migrant workers to return to work in early April. Rescue efforts are ongoing after a hotel collapsed in China's southeastern Fujian province. The 80-room hotel is located in Guangzhou City. About 70 people were trapped and more than 30 people have been rescued. The Xinjia Hotel was five stories high and had opened in June 2018. The building was recently converted to a quarantine facility for people who had recent contact with coronavirus patients. It was not immediately known why the building collapsed. While well, checking on the financial fallout, the COVID-19 outbreak is hitting China's economy hard. The country's exports fell 17% in the first two months of this year. That's the biggest drop since February last year during the trade war with the United States. Imports dropped 4%, and analysts warns that the combined January and February numbers may not reflect the full extent of the virus impact. That's because disruptions were mostly concentrated in February. Another says the slowdown is likely to continue into parts of March. The virus outbreak has forced businesses to suspend operations, disrupting supply chains. 
Official data released today show China's trade surplus with the U.S. plunged 40 percent in the first two months from $42 billion last year to $25.4 billion. Australia is asking travellers who return from overseas to be on guard over the new coronavirus. And that means to isolate themselves should they experience symptoms of cold or flu. Two people have died of the virus down under and more than 60 people infected. One of the new cases is a Melbourne-based doctor. He was diagnosed six days after returning from the U.S., but in the meantime, he had already gone back to work, even though he was showing COVID-19 symptoms. The doctor saw roughly 70 patients in a clinic and two patients in a nursing home. The nursing home residents have been isolated in their rooms and the clinic where the doctor works has been closed until further notice. Patients and clinic staff are required to isolate themselves at home for two weeks while the infected doctor is now holed up at home recovering. Australian authorities, meanwhile, announced that they will release more than a quarter of a million surgical masks from their stockpile. And this is to ensure that health workers throughout the country are not short of basic protection. So those masks are on the move now. Um, we've done a ring around of the, of the primary health networks today. Uh, I can say that they, they do have masks. Uh, GPs and others just need to ask and they will be provided. The U.S. state of Florida has confirmed two deaths from COVID-19. They're the first fatalities on the East Coast and raises the country's death toll to 17. Over 300 people across at least 28 states are infected. Two of them caught the bug at a pro-Israel lobby group's conference in Washington, D.C. About 18,000 people are said to have attended the event earlier this week. Among them were Vice President Mike Pence and Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. Two health screeners at Los Angeles International Airport also tested positive for the virus. It's not clear where they were exposed, though they were said to be screening passengers arriving from overseas, including China. A new source of concern for the U.S. is the outbreak on a cruise ship where 21 people have tested positive for the virus. The Grand Princess is stranded off San Francisco. It's expected to make its way to a non-commercial port where all 3,500 aboard would undergo another round of tests. We are taking uh, all measures necessary to see to the health of the Americans and those involved on the Grand Princess. Officials have pulled the plug on the South by Southwest Festival in Austin, Texas over coronavirus fears. The event, featuring music, technology and film, draws hundreds of thousands of visitors from around the world every year. It was supposed to take place from March 13th to 22nd. The announcement comes after several major companies, including Netflix, Mashable, TikTok and Intel, withdrew from the festival. It's just one of several music festivals and sports events that has been cancelled or curtailed as a precaution. In Iran, close to 150 people have died of the virus and nearly 6,000 have already been infected. In the West Bank city of Bethlehem, 15 American tourists have been quarantined in a hotel in Beit Jala. That's the area that's been in lockdown for several days because of COVID-19 cases there. The Palestinian Authority has declared a state of emergency in its territories after more than a dozen cases were confirmed in the city. Elsewhere in the region, worshippers have returned to Islam's holiest site on Saturday after Saudi Arabia temporarily lifted its ban on visiting the Grand Mosque of Mecca. The ban was taken on Wednesday and could affect millions of Muslims ahead of the fasting month of Ramadan and the annual Hajj pilgrimage. Saudi Arabia has confirmed five coronavirus cases so far. Meanwhile, an Egyptian cruise ship with over 100 foreign tourists on board remains in quarantine in Luxor after 12 crew members tested positive for the new coronavirus. Authorities were alerted after a Taiwanese tourist who traveled on the ship was tested positive. Now here's a look at how some people might take precautions to the extreme or shall we say they're getting creative about ways to interact safely. This saloon in China is giving its customers haircuts 
a twist. Well, what you're looking at, it's dubbed a long-distance haircut. It's uniquely designed to make customers feel safe during the epidemic. Hairdressers hold meter-long poles, interchangeable with brushes, shavers and hair dryers at the tip. Regular customers have requested this haircut for the sheer fun of it, making light of a tough situation. Right still to come, years pass, but families of those on Malaysian Airlines flight MH370 still looking for closure. We'll have the full story after this. Cyber attack could actually affect critical infrastructure. The fear always is, what if? It's been hard, you know, to define what's Peruvian cuisine for me. Canadians are very conservative about how they eat, so when you make small changes, people